Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamal at Exiton Interactive and in this video we're going to go over the creation and setup of the project that we're going to use for the remainder of this series. Before I forget, I do want to mention that you will find a link in the description below to the article which you're seeing here uh, associated with this video. And the article contains the instructions for what I'm doing as well as the code for what we're going to enter today. So if you'd like to check that out, uh, please feel free. We'll move this out the way and we'll start. Uh, so in Visual Studio, we'll click File, New Project. And I like to begin with a blank solution. And I'm going to call that ASP.NET Core Angular Webpack. And I do want to mention that uh, we are targeting uh, .NET Framework 4.6.1. Click OK. Once Visual Studio has created the solution, I want to right click on the uh, solution itself. Oops, too fast for it. We'll uh, choose Add New Project. We want a web. We want an ASP.NET Core web application. I'm going to name that Web UI. Click OK. On this next screen here, we do want to make sure that uh, ASP.NET Core 2.0 is selected as well as web application and no authentication. So we'll add the, the authentication ourselves. Click OK and we'll give it a moment to create the project. And the first things that we're going to do are delete some things that we don't need. So first we'll start with the www root folder. Inside CSS folder, then we'll delete the site.css as well as the minified version. Images, we're going to delete all four of the images. JS, we're going to delete the site.js and again the minified version as well. And the lib folder, we don't, we do not need anything in the lib folder, so we're going to delete the whole folder itself. And the last thing for us to get rid of is the bower.json and bower.rc files in the root of our project. Of course, you may notice the little uh, triangle here on the bower folder that will disappear when we close and reopen the project. So now we're done uh, deleting, we'll start adding a few things. What I'm going to do is right click on the project on Web UI. I'm going to choose Add New Folder. I'm going to name that folder Source. This folder will contain the TypeScript, style sheets, and such. And since we're talking about style sheets, we're going to right click on the Source folder, choose Add New Folder. I'm going to call that one SAS. Now I want to right click on the SAS folder and say open folder in file explorer and then the only reason I did that is to get a console to open easily within that folder so we're inside of the uh, solution inside the web UI project the source and SAS folders and in here I'm going to type in uh, bourbon install and then I'm going to type in neat install and bidders install. We'll go back to our project. The result of doing that now is we have uh, three folders, each containing different folders and files. And we'll do a little description of these over our web browser. So Bourbon, first thing that we installed is a uh, SAS mix-in library. Neat is a grid system for SAS. And bidders is just a beginning point for styling. So it has starting styles for, as you can see, check boxes, you know, form elements, tables, whatever. So those are just starting points. So move those over. And one thing I like to do when I start is to rename these folders. So I'm going to rename bourbon to 0 bourbon. I'm going to rename neat to 1 neat. I'm going to rename base to 2 base. So now the bourbon and neat folders both contain a file 
in the root of their folder, respective folders that simply uh, imports all of the files within that folder. Uh, and also, we're going to note that in both the Bourbon and Neat folders, we're not going to make any changes. Uh, we may update either of those or both later on, and any changes we would make would be overwritten, um, so we won't make any changes in there. First thing, though, we're going to add is we're going to right-click on the SAS folder. We're going to add a new item. It's going to be a CSS file. I'm going to name it underscore bourbon bourbon dash neat. The purpose for this uh, file is simply to import those two files I was mentioning before. So now when we want to have access to the contents of the bourbon and neat folders, we only have to import this one file. And also now inside of the base folder, I'm going to create a file. So I'm going to add new item. It's also a style sheet. I'm going to rename or I'm going to name it media queries. So as an example, what we'll do is at the beginning here is we'll import uh, the file that we just created. So now if we like, we'd have access to all of the bourbon and neat mix-ins. And an example here, we're going to create some mix-ins. So we'll say at mix-in, call it media-lt. So the LT stands for less than. We'll call it, we're going to expect a max width to be passed in. So we'll create our mix-in here. So screen and max width will be equal to the max width we are passed in. So that's our media query. So now all we want to do is include uh, whatever was typed inside of our media less than mix-in. So we'll just say at content. So now whenever we want to have a mix-in which is valid when the screen is less than certain uh, width, we can use this mix-in to do it. And instead of typing them all, simply going to copy, paste. So as I mentioned, we just did the media less than. So now we have a less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, and between. These again are just to make our lives easier writing media queries. So I'm going to close that or collapse that. And next thing that we're going to do is that uh, start setting up our node environment. So again, I'm going to right click on the web UI project and I'm going to open that in the folder explorer. And I'm going to open console. And so it's at the root of our project. And here I'm going to type in npm init and dash y. The dash y will simply uh, have npm use default values for everything. So now that has created a package.json file at the root of our folder or our root of our project. I do need to rename the, or change the name because it doesn't like capital letters. So now our option is we can either copy and paste the contents from the article for the package.json or it's also available on the in the article is uh, just a code that we're going to use to install each of the packages using npm. So I'll just copy and paste that and hit enter. We'll let npm do its magic. Next we're going to set up our TypeScript environment. So I'm going to right click on web UI. I'm going to add new item. This time will be a TypeScript file. And I'm going that'll be named tsconfig. And this file is just to pass in all the options that we need to the TypeScript compiler. And we'll use 2.3. And we're going to use, or I'm just going to copy. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the reason I made a mistake there, we're going to delete that. Actually, what I wanted was to add new item and it's actually a JSON file. So 
tsconfig.json. Now we're good. So I've copied also again from the article. Uh, inside that article, there will be a link to the uh, tsconfig specifications so you can check out what all the options mean, any other options you might want to add. Important one though is that the uh, compile and save we're going to set to false because we will take care of all the compiling using Webpack. And we're going to add again, click right click on Web UI, add new item. Again, it's a JSON uh, file. This time it's tslint. So this will take care of all the linting for our TypeScript files. And what it's doing is it's just importing the latest and overriding a few of them. One of the important ones here is I do uh, access properties on objects using string literals a lot. So we'll set the no string literal option to false. Save and close that. Of course, you can use whatever you like to make this product. You don't have to use Visual Studio, but since I am using Visual Studio, and if you are, we'll want to right click on Web UI and say edit Web UI .cs proj. Here we'll want to make, uh, or we'll want to add a property group. And so the property group that we want to add here is this. And it says TypeScript compiled uh, blocked. So this will keep uh, Visual Studio from compiling our TypeScript files when the project is built. Right. So we'll close that. And let's do a few other things here. So obviously, in, they named this thing ASP.NET Core Angular Webpack. So we'll be using Angular and other third party libraries. And we do not want to bundle all of Angular in each of our bundles. So we're going to create a bundle all on its own for third party library. So to begin, I'm going to right click on the source folder, choose add new folder. I'll name that app. And then I'm going to right click on it, say add new item. And this time it's a TypeScript file. And we'll call it vendor.ts. Let's see, we'll copy, paste. Again, this just holds all the third party codes. So core JS, zone, Angular the classless polyfill so we can deal with uh, classless API in JavaScript and the web animations or web animations.js is a polyfill for web animations. Save that. Next we're going to make a few changes to the pages. So we'll open our layout page. The layout page uh, has references to several things that we've already deleted. So we you know, deleted the live folder, so there's no more bootstrap. We just deleted the site uh, CSS. We just deleted site JS. So there's a whole bunch of things in here that we don't need. So I'm simply going to copy and delete all of that. So now that leaves us with this main bundle, both CSS and JavaScript, as well as the vendor. Again, those will all be created using Webpack. And so we're, we're done there. One other one is the index.cshtml. It contains, uh, we'll make a change to the import or the model statement. And then we're going to get rid of the content. The content references the images that we've deleted, some navigation using Bootstrap or style using Bootstrap. So we'll just delete them all uh, to begin with. And let's see, make sure, I believe that'll do it for this video. So again, this is just the, the setup. In the next video, we're going to set up Webpack and so that we can finally do something a little more interesting. So until then, I'll talk to you later.